What's up, guys? This is Ruben from Mouth Guard Out Podcast. How you doing, guys? Welcome to our first podcast, guys. What I want to do in this podcast, guys, I want to get in the minds of MMA fighters. I want to see what goes in their mind. But most importantly, I want to see what they do outside of the ring. So what I'm going to do really quick, guys, I have a special guest today. We got Kimberly. The Killer Panda. The Killer Panda. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh, guys, let's go ahead and hit the intro. And welcome to the first podcast of Mouth Guard Out Podcast. Peace. Peace. Killer Panda, how are you doing? Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your day. Say hi to the audience. Hi, audience. N- now, really quick, before we get started, um, what what gym do you train out of? If you want to give a shout out, if you want to, let's get all the formalities out first, and then we'll go from there. I train out of Valiant Training Center in yeah. Santee, California. Santee. Mm-hmm. That's it? <laughs> oh, that was it. That's it? Well, she's out at Valiant Trading Center in Santee. <laughs> I've known you for going on two years, about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And like anybody, you know, they look you up, they, they you know find out who you are, and then they visit the gym, and then mm-hmm. you make the decisions of, you know, joining the gym or the training center, I should say, and and basically part of, becoming part of the family. Mm-hmm. Now, my wife and I have been going to the gym for about a year and a half. And now the great thing about it is she was actually our trainer. For the first, was it two months, I think? Yep. She kicked our ass. She <laughs> kicked our ass. And one of the great things about this is I, I I trust anybody that, for example, I pay. That makes sense. I was paying you for your expertise to train us on how to safely do our exercises and all that. And then, you know, next thing you know, you cut the leash off and mm-hmm. we started doing our own things. But just recently, I would say, uh, I think it was September of 2023, I started getting um, boxing lessons from you. Mm -hmm. So after, you know, going through my whole process of of learning, I said, you know what? I want to learn how to box because every time I go to the gym, if you guys ever been to uh, Valiant Training Center, they have the gym side and they have the actual, what would you call that side? Uh, Fitness room. The fitness room. Mm -hmm. No, that's where we go. Uh, where, where all the gym equipment is, but then where all the guys box and fight. Oh. Um, that's the martial arts side. The martial arts mm-hmm. side. And every time I go in there, I see guys having fun, ladies having fun, and then sweating their butts off. And I said, you know what? I think I need to do that. And that's when I, I reached out to Kim. I said, what do I have to do to uh, to be part of that? Right. And you know what she said? She said, you just get your ass here and let's yep. do it. And you just guess what? Start. Absolutely, guys. But once again, guys, uh, just a little bit intro uh, between her and I. But let's get into it, guys. Um, let's talk about MMA. And let's talk about first after the mouth guard comes out. Okay. Yeah. What What is that feeling? Okay. And just to, just, just to set this up, right now you're 2-0. Mm-hmm. I'm 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. What is the feeling? I mean, once... I don't know, once they raise your hand, I mean, once again, I'm not in there, I'm not an expert, I just want to learn off of you, but what is the feeling that you get when they raise your hand and they says, you are the winner? What? I, 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 walk me through that. I want to feel like I'm right there next to you, like I'm in the octagon next to you. Um, it's a pretty great feeling. Yeah, I bet. Um, I watched a documentary recently on Demetrius Johnson okay. and- he obviously is on a way higher caliber caliber than I am. Um, he's a professional. I'm just an amateur so far two and Oh. Yeah. Um, and he, the way he describes his performances, um, yeah. Or fighting is a job. It's a job. So it's a job. Okay. That's true. Um, you know, you sign a contract and your job to, um, execute that job Mm -hmm. is on this date. Okay. And so it could be anywhere from eight weeks, 12 yeah. weeks. You might know th- uh, three months mm-hmm. um, of when to complete your job. Yeah. And so once you get that, your hand raised or once the job is done, it's yeah. just a relief because. No matter if you lose or win, you're, the job is done. The job is done. Not you, to compare you to a contractor, but, you know, I, you know, I, I do other things, but it's. Hiring like a contractor. Exactly. Is, is that what I'm saying? Once yeah. again, I don't want to, you know, um, demote no, people or anything. But I think for the average person, that yeah. is a great example to compare it to. Okay. Because, um, like I said, um, this promotion comes to you yeah. and they ask you, 
hey, I have a job. Okay. This job is to yeah. fight so and so. Do you accept? Really? You either accept or you decline. Yeah. Um, if you accept, awesome. You guys sign a contract yeah. and then the job is to be completed on this day. Uh-huh. And that's fight day. Yeah. And so you spend, like I said, eight, 12 weeks, depending on how long you know you're going to have to yeah. prepare for this job. Training, basically. Exactly. It's yeah. all the training. Yeah. Um, and then fight day is the day the job has to be completed. Wow. And then once... Once the ref makes a decision mm-hmm. or it, if it goes to a decision of a knockout yeah. or um, goes to the referees, yeah. then the job is done. Absolutely. And it's just, just a sigh of relief because then you're like, I can eat again. Yeah. I can think about other things again. Yeah. Um, what's, the, found- what's the time frame after you win or lose that you can do another fight? I don't know if there's, you know, reasons like OSHA, EPA, whatever, saying, hey, you're not ready to fight between now and three months from now. Or can you just fight the next day if you wanted to? Um, That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, The time frame depends on how you either win or lose the fight. Yeah. So the first one, um, my first fight, if you... If you knock someone out, yeah. the person who got knocked out, yes. they give you a probation period where you cannot train and okay. you cannot um, compete again. Got you. Um, and then, so that answers your question. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, we're getting there. Right. Yeah. Um, but it just depends on if you lose, how yeah. did you lose? Did you lose yeah. to decision? Did you lose to TKO? Did you lose wow. to knockout? And then the medical the medicals, yeah. they will determine, Really, um, they'll give you a slip and they will determine your um, probation period gotcha. or your suspension of training yeah. or your fighting. Yeah. And really quick, guys, I don't know none of this stuff. So <laughs> I'm getting all the feedback right away. So everything that she's saying is, hasn't been rehearsed or anything. Like I said, this is for me to know and hopefully you have others to actually learn from this stuff. So if you are thinking about, you know, getting into MMA or, or maybe fighting, boxing, whatever the case may be, jujitsu, mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? It, this is good information uh, to know. So now let's go back to the, the previous question. Once you get knocked out, I mean, I'm not once you win, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, we so far she hasn't get knocked out. I mean, what what's I know you said something it's relief. But is there I don't, I don't know. I have never been through that. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um is there a thing of hell yeah I won or hell yeah this is over or hell yeah it's time to eat pizza. You know? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? All of the above. All of the above. You could just start thinking again. Yeah. Because for me yeah. personally when it's a fight camp that's all I think about. No shit, right? Yeah, that's all I'm thinking about. All I'm thinking about is how do I prepare for this job and wow. how do I complete this job in the way that I want it to end? You eat, the, sleep, fight, everything. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, and what's nice is yeah. that, um, like I said, I'm an amateur right now. Uh-huh. What's nice is that um, my husband, he is a professional fighter. Okay. So before I even fought, mm-hmm. I was able to kind of experience yes. all of that yeah. and mentally prepare for what I had to go through yeah. in order to get ready for my amateur fights. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give uh, your hubby a shout out? My hubby is Jeffrey, the administrator, Peterson. The administrator, <laughs> Peterson. What's going on, man? You know what? I've never had the pleasure of seeing him in fight, but um, I don't know if he's retired or taking a break, but maybe if he ever does, I'm, I'm going to be right there next to him. You never know with him. Yeah, absolutely. You never know. Spe- speaking of fighting, okay, I've been to both your fights, mm-hmm. okay, and obviously it was exciting. I think it was more exciting for me and my wife because we knew who you are. Mm-hmm. Because to be honest with you, and my wife can confirm, the other people next to us were rooting for the other person. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I was getting pissed, but, I, but then again, they don't know you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So uh, her and I just had a big cheering contest compared to the other guys. <laughs> like, hit her, hit her. I said, no, don't hit her. She's my girl. No, don't hit her. But uh, it's, it's just one of those things that I see you in a different light. Mm-hmm. It's scary to see you. I'm sorry. It, it, it's scary. And and here's a good example. Your last fight was with Sarah. I don't know her line. Valencia. Val- Valencia? Yes. Valencia. That was a great fight. Mm-hmm. That was a great fight. As a matter of fact, if you don't mind, we can see some footage here in a second. Right. And maybe break it down. Not to bring back, you know, these traumas or anything, no. but I, I want to know. But 
conf- you can actually confirm my wife when uh, when we saw you. You know how we you were upstairs, we were upstairs, and you can see down. Mm-hmm. We didn't recognize you. Oh. We did not recognize you. <laughs> it was like, who in the hell is that? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, it's something to where I've never seen that side of you before. I see you smiling. We go to the gym. Hey, Ruben. Yeah. Hey, Jen. Whatever, <laughs> blah. We saw you and we just went like this. Oh, shit. Let's just walk away. <laughs> I swear to God. Didn't we, babe? Yeah, it was scary. T- tell me uh, if you can. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that was right before the fight. Right. Right before the fight. But what is in your mind? I know it's okay. I got to win. I got to win. I got to win. But what is in your mind? Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it uh, uh, anxiety? I I need to know because if I saw you the first day we ever met and I saw that, I don't think I would have joined the gym. (laughs) I swear. I'm like, oh, babe, she's going to kill us. But please tell me. Nothing really is in my mind when I walk out and you step into that canvas. Yeah. Um, you know, you prepare for so long <clears throat> and then the moment you walk out, you kind of just like zone in. Wow. It's wartime. I know it it's is. It's a battle. I know you it know? is. I don't care about seeing my family out in, wow. the, in the stands. I don't care about the students. Uh-huh. I really don't care about anything. No, I believe it. I believe um, it. All I know is that it's just me and her uh-huh. in that cage and I don't want to lose, so yeah. I'm going to do everything in my power yeah. um, and in my preparation to win. Absolutely. Um, but really, nothing goes through my head. No. Uh-uh. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now, and I think you, you and I had this conversation before. When you're in the octagon or the ring, uh, what's the proper term? Um, cage. The cage. Okay, there you go. Cage. The cage. Mm-hmm. When you're in that cage, I hear Jeff clear as day. I hear <laughs> Jeff as if he's standing right there next to me. Uh-huh. You say you don't hear him. I don't hear anything. Wow. I and this comes from many competitions of having yeah. him in my corner. Yeah. Um, you know, we work together, we yeah. live together. Yeah. He's my head coach. Yeah. Um, so at some point it just like becomes like fog. Like I just don't I'm so zoned in wow. of trying to beat up that person that's in front of me yeah. that I just don't listen to anything Mm -hmm. so that's why it's so important in training for me to really understand moves and how to connect those moves because i already know that i'm not going to hear him like wow um it's in between rounds that i might Mm -hmm. might listen to what he says yeah but i've told him before like this is why in training i ask these questions and i just have to really know because in that cage it's just me yeah it's no one's gonna push my body to the left or the right to uh-huh. slip punches no one's gonna um do a sprawl for me i have to do that all yeah. on my own yeah. muscle memory yeah so i have to really focus on these moves that we do in training yeah because he might say you need to stop throwing kicks yeah but i might really not hear that at all wow yeah i i, I say that it's funny that you brought that up your last fight like I said, I can hear him like if he's standing uh-huh. right or sitting next to me. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, Jeff, what's up? Stick to the script. <laughs> Stick to the script. Remember you said that? Yeah, the game plan. You just yeah. like. <laughs> did, Kim, did you hear that? Did you hear that? You didn't hear it. I did not. Yeah, I didn't you didn't hear, hear any it. of it. And I'm like, do I relay it back to her that way? <laughs> so if you want, Jeff, you can say it to me and I'll respond. I'll, I'll echo it back to her. Mm-hmm. But obviously you won that fight. Yes. And, and which is great. But. In those two fights, and once again, we'll, we'll watch the actual uh, some of the footage here in a second. In those two fights, which one do you think was easy? And which one do you think it was difficult? Um, I think both of them were equally um, challenging okay. because just to fight is challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciated the first fight over the second fight yeah. because we didn't have to go all three rounds. Yeah. Um, I didn't get knocked down the first fight. Um, I barely got touched the first fight. So I really liked the results of the first one. But both of them are just as equally Mm -hmm. um, challenging. Did you think the second fight, going into the second fight, was going to be the same as the first? I wanted to. Yeah. I 
everyone hopes that they can just knock out the yeah. person in the first 10 seconds and mm-hmm. then it's done. Mm-hmm. But I, I need was... to get my money's worth. So don't ever do that because I paid a lot of money to be there. So, yeah, give me don't don't be like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike Tyson. 30 seconds. Boom. Done. Really, bro? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But um, I uh, definitely mentally yeah. prepared myself to say, hey, this fight can go all three rounds. So yeah. you need to prepare yourself for all three rounds. Wow. The cardio, the it's, it's more mental than anything. Right. Um. The training is mainly physical, yeah. but on fight day, it is all mental. So yeah. they always say that fight camp is 90% physical, yeah. um, but then on fight day, it's 90% mental. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that's why, and, and once again, just correct me if I'm wrong. Like, for example, when you and I were, 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 were uh, doing our private lessons, mm-hmm. when I hit two street and you give me the commands, in my mind, saying, thinking, okay, how would I hear somebody in the background? Because you're okay, you're telling you're giving me three, two, three, you know, whatever step, or you know, the commands you give me. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I gotta remember those. I gotta like, like I'm gonna quote Jeff, stick to the script. And when I'm doing that, you're right. I can't listen to something. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, and and that's why I asked you that question because I think either you go numb or you go deaf because you have a lot of concentration, a lot of movements, a lot of like you said, mental. Mm-hmm. I think once the mental takes over, your limbs do. Second nature, right? They just right. do what they got to do. Right. That makes sense. Wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You can't lose focus in there. Yeah. And unfortunately for me, yeah. losing focus is, I think, listening to my coach in the wow. corner. If I hear him, sorry I about think, that, man. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just think that if, uh, from experience, yeah. many, many competitions of him in my corner yeah. and many competitions not hearing him in my corner, yeah. I think just for me, yeah. um, if... I just didn't want, I don't want to lose focus. Yeah. Now you, you keep saying many competitions. Uh-huh. Is it more than the two that you've done or? Um, I've done uh, kickboxing competitions and I've done jujitsu really? competitions. Yes. Wow. Are you, does that get, what am I trying to say here? Right now you're two and oh, so the, that doesn't count towards your numbers, correct? No, the two and oh only counts for MMA specifically. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, kickboxing is a different sport. Yeah. Um, and then jujitsu is a different sport. Okay, so you would just have your, I don't, once again, I don't, I don't know the names, but your ratings for those each individual ones, right? Right. Okay, got you, got you. All right. So if you don't mind, Kim, um, can we take a look at your first fight? Yes. Okay, and that was with Veronica something. I, please, no disrespect to her, but Veronica Leva? Lainis, Lainis, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. That was an exciting fight because that was where we went to L.A. To mm-hmm. see you. Commerce Casino. Commerce Casino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went all the way up there to see you. And I'm like, wow, it was just crazy. It was, this is, I've never known about MMA. Obviously, you hear, oh, Conor McGregor. Yeah, you see that on the news and all that or, or whatever commercials on YouTube. But for my wife and I to experience that and go, babe, let's go to a fight. Let's go see that that lady or the girl that was teaching us. Let's go see her fight. And obviously, we're. what am I trying to say here? We were excited to see you, but in my heart, and I'm being honest with you, there was a fear for me for you. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Especially on the second one. I'm like, oh, I, I think you remember that. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I knew I wanted you to win, but there was a fear of, I don't know. Y- you never know what could happen. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. I knew somebody was going to hit my little sister. It was like, <laughs> someone's going to hit her. Hey, I was going to jump in the ring. Don't you be hitting my little sister, right? But if you don't mind, Kim, can we look at some of the footage, if you if you don't mind? I don't mind. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, stream it to here. What you got? Yeah. Let's <laughs> you see. pull up? All right, so this is the one with, uh, just to set this up real quick, and I'm going to be uh, superimposing it on the video, so don't try to look at this. It'll be on the screen when you guys are watching it. So this is the fight between Kimberly the Killer Panda versus Ver- Veronica Lainis. Lainis, I believe that's it. I think this is the beginning of the fight. I think I already queued it on there, so let's check it out. Oh, oh sorry about that. Now, the the... In this fight, both of you guys were debuting. Yes. So you guys were zero and zero. Yes, both of us were making our amateur debuts. Amateur debut. Now, once again, please correct me if I'm wrong. They called you guys phantom weight or bantam? Bantam weight. Bantam. What what is bantam? Um, so every weight category uh-huh. has a name. Okay. So, so like if I was featherweight. I would be heavyweight. Because I'm two hundred and 
30 pounds, I guess. Uh, yes. Yeah. Y- yes. There's also uh, heavyweight, yeah. light heavyweight, um, welterweight, yeah. bantamweight, okay. featherweight. So um, it's a little bit different for... Actually, I think it's the same. For, for women? Yeah, I'm so terrible at this. I, I have think no it's idea. the same for... And that's why we have this podcast. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So this was bantamweight. Yes. B-A-T-M-N-O, something like that. Yes. That's 135. 135. Okay. She's actually 115, but yeah, she just, you know, (laughs) she gained weight for the fight, but let's check it out. Bantam, there it is. So it was funny is when we were there, I heard Phantom. Oh. And even Jen looked at me and she goes, what is Phantom? I said, well, I guess that's a weight class, but it wasn't Phantom. It was Bantam. Yes. All right. So there's uh, Veronica looking confident. To, to be honest with you, she, she looked kind of cocky. <laughs> you don't have to agree because <laughs> then there'll be a rematch. Okay, there it is. Okay, she's... Stretching their shoulders, right? <laughs> I guess. Kimberly in the red. So you have bloods and crips, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, really quick. I'm, I'm gonna. It's gonna get annoying because I'm gonna keep stopping. No worries. Okay, you're 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 getting the ready. I guess I'm gonna call yes. it the ready. So as soon as they, I guess the guy dropped his hand. As you start walking up, is it slow motion or is it? Um, for me, yeah. um, you could see for a second, I actually pause because uh-huh. I'm wondering if she's going to hit me first. Okay. When she didn't, like within the first five seconds, when uh-huh. she didn't engage, I was like, all right, I'm going to engage. Then. Really? Yep. Okay. And so then that's when you could see that I kind of ambush her with a bunch of punches. Yes. Okay. Let me rewind real quick then just mm-hmm. so I can see that. So that was my thought process at that time. And it's, it's, it's funny that you, I know it's kind of weird. It sounds, it's funny that you can remember it. No shit, she was there, right? But it's funny how when you're there, it think, everything's a blur. Yes. So everything outside yeah. is a blur. Uh-huh. But my inner dialogue uh-huh. and my inner thoughts are still there. Oh, wow. So when I watch the fights yes. that I've been through, I could kind of give you a, a like a play by way. I'm like, right here, I thought this. Uh-huh. And right here, I felt this. Wow. And you uh, at certain points of these fights, it's pretty <sighs> funny. That. I'm shaking. Just <laughs> she's right here. That's her. That's her. That's her. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's get into it. Boom. Okay, so I rewound it a little bit. Rewound. Rewounded it. That's that's a word today. <laughs> All right, so there you go. And so you then, like pause right there. And boom. Then, yep. So that's when you're like, oh, come on, yep. what's, what's going on? What is going to happen? Me? Got yeah. you. Let me click. Like an so animal. you're just grilling, boom, boom, and she, obviously she's trying to stop you. Here she didn't feel like um, anything heavy or like she was resisting trying to get off the cage, yeah. and so I just stayed there. She didn't, it, she didn't really push back at all, yeah. and so I was like, I'm just gonna keep her up against the cage. Wow. Now, is there any? Like, I heard him say double underhook. Is mm-hmm. there any techniques that you can tell me what you're doing? Like, I, I don't know the words. I don't know the terminology. But if you see something, oh, yeah, I did this on here. So, um, underhooks. So. We've actually trained this position a lot. It's called cage wrestling. Okay. Um, underhooks are really important in mm-hmm. wrestling or grappling in general. Yeah. It just means that you have, like, the better position. Got you. Um, some people, like, she has an overhook. Some people are really good at overhooks too. Okay. Um, so who's under? Who's over? I'm under. Okay. See her arm right yep, here. Right my arm, my right arm. That's right under there. her arm. Mm-hmm. And then she has an overhook. Do so, you have leverage there to flip her over or to drop her, or is it? The, yes. Okay. You have leverage to kind of follow up on other things. Okay. Wow. All right. I'm gonna keep going. There's Je- there's my wife right there. You can see her, and then there's me <laughs> in the back right there recording. I heard him say clinch, so that's, you're just. Body clinch. Body clinch, okay. Okay, well, there's a face punch. Wow. 
Wow. And just remember, when you're fighting, you yeah. don't hear any of this commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so boom. So the, that was the leverage you used with her body weight. Or yes. How, how did that work? That was definitely unexpected. Like, oh, wow. I just kind of, um, like I said, muscle memory. When you yeah. train, uh-huh. you just develop certain muscle memories. Yeah. And I was like totally surprised <laughs> that I was able to execute that body lock takedown. So you felt the fall? I was happy. Fall? You felt the fall like, oh, we're falling and boom. I just, um, she started getting off the cage and okay. I just transitioned to something else. Yeah. And um path of least resistance uh, she fell over yeah. and i was very happy about that wow so you practice ground and pound when you're training and so this is considered ground and pound ground and pound oh wow you're on the ground and try to hit as much as possible yes, she's on the ground and i'm trying to pound her okay there it is there it is <laughs> there it is i just saw red at this point from your gloves? No, I just saw red. Like, just, I wanted to hurt her. <laughs> oh, got it, got it. Now, w- when you're there, do you feel anger? Because obviously you don't know these people. Mm-mm. You're just there to fight. Mm-hmm. It's not like one of those, oh, she was talking shit. No, mm-hmm. she was, no, no, you just, I just got to do I my sh- job and, and leave. I try not to take it personally. Yeah. Because it's a show. Yes. Technically, this is a show. You have really? an audience. You're in a yeah. cage. Um, I always refer back to like the gladiator days. Right. Like this, like this is my first amateur fight. Yeah. So. Um, and to be honest, to interrupt you, it didn't seem amateur. I uh, thought I was like, whoa, the stadium. Yeah. You had the ring girls going on. You had, you know, it, it just it, it it felt legit. This production, yeah. Spar Star, yes. is outstanding. Really, I think that. Um, the way they put it all together, yeah. it was a legit show. Really? And then uh, yes, yeah, I can tell. And then you'll see later on yeah. the second fight, you saw a different type of show. Yes. It and did. that was a smaller one inside their actual gym. In their gym, yeah. Yep. So And then the third does the other one I went to was at the hotel where oh, Mon- e- Epic. It's Epic, yes, yes, Epic. yes. That one also That was like a scaled down version of Spar Star. Yes. And then the the uh, the the Dan Henderson one was at the gym. Right. Got you. Got you. All right. I'm going to keep going. Let's go over here. Now, I, I remember he, he says something here. Watch. So, you see what he said? A couple more seconds. We've got a T, TKO. Let me, let me play it back again. So that means he said another ten more seconds you would have won by TKO. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Well, obviously they had the timer there. I'm just I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to be in that scenario. The, uh, because this is an amateur show. Yeah. Uh, they definitely put the fighters' health into consideration. Yeah. So what is um, it? Two minutes or three minutes? Uh, this was two minutes. Two minutes. Three rounds. Two minutes. Three rounds. Two minutes. Wow. If it was a professional fight, they would have just let it kept on going until, yeah. you know, they. Until somebody taps out yeah, exactly. or okay, got you, got you. The ref could stop it, uh-huh. um, but they have to have like they'll let it go longer because okay. it is professional. Wow! Because this is amateur, yeah. They don't make a living off of these yeah. really. This is more for the experience. Mm-hmm. They're gonna stop it so that the longevity of the fighter they could fight, you know, maybe six from, months from there or three gotcha. months if they wanted to. Got you. Now, obviously, we won this fight. Yes. Let's get to the point where you actually. Oh, that's your interview. Let's see. There we go. So here we go. Right there. Right there. <laughs> they should just like loop it. Like, you know, you have on, was it uh, Instagram where you can just loop something? Highlight reel. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Right there. She was trying to get away from you, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just, it was, the, uh, no offense. Was that a lucky shot or did you see her moving and you said, fuck it, don't go anywhere. I'm going to go after you. Or... I just, ch- I chased her down. Okay. 
I just chased her down. I didn't want to stop punching. Uh -huh. I didn't want to stop getting into her face. I kind of felt at that point that my striking was more dominant than hers. Yeah. And so I just tried to capitalize on it. And, and because she was walking away, she wasn't paying attention. Because I saw that she was doing this, and you just, wow, right there. Mm -hmm. That's Oh, wow, that's amazing. That's... Did I know that I was going to throw a hook? No. Yeah. Did I know that hook was going to land and knock her out? No. Wow. That's crazy. So that's very nice. It's very, very nice. Very oh. nice. All right, so let's go back to the video. Let's see what's going on. Sarah with a good inside kick there. Clinching up now against the cage. Here's the fun part. Here's the fun part. The clinch initially. Good knee from Kim. Absolutely. Good short strike. Oh, my oh, goodness. Wow. Okay, so she, she was... What happened? Um, I was blocking punches with my face, and I got knocked down. Really? <laughs> wow. That's the part where we got scared. And I'm just going to tell you a secret, because I was recording. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I saw that, I'm like... <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't record this. I, no, it's not that I didn't want to record it. It's just I, I, I how, how am I trying mm -hmm. to say here? It was, it was hurtful to see that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Instead of me sitting there enjoying, like cheering on, I said, you know what? I'm gonna put my phone away so I can focus on you more yeah. because I don't want to be looking through a screen where I can, you know, what I'm saying. So I'm like, ah, you know what? But yeah. So uh, my my inner dialogue during that moment, yeah, was we were just in that exchange, yeah. and then. I just felt my body just not move anymore. Like really? I didn't have control of my body. And that's when I went down. And then muscle memory yeah. was like, scoot your back to the cage and use the cage to get up. But mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, dude, I can't feel my body. Like, why can't you feel your body? Like, get get up, Kim. You got to get up, get up, yeah. get up, get up. And then I just eventually made my way to get up. And then what's cool is that Someone pointed this out to me, but you could see the ref was about to stop the fight. Are you freak? I yeah, didn't so see if that. You keep going. Oh no! Well, it's already passed. I'm like, it's, it's like oh, no, we're seeing it's, it live. It's right now. You'll see it. Or maybe you can't see it from here. The ref was about to stop it. Okay. But you stood up. Yes. And that's when he says, "Okay, we're good." Yeah. Ooh. Once he see if a, a good ref, yeah, will see that you're still like engaged. Yes. You know, you're not moving, you're not shielding up, your yeah. eyes aren't rolled back in your head. Wow. You know, nothing was going on like that. Yeah. So I was still fully conscious and then I felt like I could possibly get up and bring, pull her back, but yeah. it didn't happen. But I just got up and just kept on going. Wow. And I got thrown. <laughs> what Was she challenging at the beginning or you just didn't know her, her wit, her fight or... Because uh, it's, you know, sorry about that. A lot of times, you know, like, for example, football players, boxers, what they do is they watch, you know, reels from them. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do that? Or I I mean, I don't know. Yes. Okay. So the first fight, it's our debut. We don't uh -huh. have footage of each other. No. Uh -huh. um, then the second fight, this is her second fight. This is my second fight. We're both one to know at this oh, point. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're both one to know at this uh -huh. point. And so I watched her first fight saw that she had a certain game plan, saw yeah. that she felt more comfortable in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of plan around that. Yeah. Got it. So you were studying her script, basically. Yes. Her just moves. off of that one fight. And of Got course, it. you use social media to find other things. <clears throat> yeah. You go on the gym page, you go on their personal page, yeah. you just study yeah. You're, you study your job. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's, so, it's like the blueprint. Yep. You got to study the blueprint because, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Let's keep going. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah.
Ja. And you actually went the three rounds. Mm -hmm. The three we rounds. We all rounds. Oh man! For this fight. And obviously, you you won it, which was wow. Um, if, I'm gonna grab that that last part. Oh, let me just jump to the back because there is some questions that I want to ask. Now that we got a little warmed up on the podcast, let's see. Let's go to the last one. I think it's the one where the guys are talking. And yeah, that's the one. That's the. I guess that's the last round. This is right. This one right here. This one right here. So. Yep, last round. Yeah, that's one thing I notice. Mm -hmm. I goes, I thought they were going to touch gloves, but they just went at it. No. It, it, the the whole purpose of touching gloves is like, all right, get ready for a good fight or mm -hmm. or just just like shaking hands. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or bowing or something, right? Mm -hmm. But is you didn't want to do it or she didn't want to do it? Um, I didn't really care to do it. No? Uh, no. Okay. So you're the <laughs> like, instigator? We both know what we want to do. Yeah. So. Got it. And you did one too. I remember that. I think it was in the second round. I did one in the second round and yes. I did one in the uh, third round. Yes, because I remember in the second round, stick to the script, stick to the script, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if you remember that, Jeff. Well, all I did was scream, stick to the game plan. I heard script. <laughs> because even remember she said, stick to the script, because she did a spin and then you did a spin. Mm -hmm. And I guess Jeff's like, no, that's not what we train. Stick to the script. And no. I'm like, I told you, I heard him clearly from the uh, from the actual above uh, the stage. There it is. Yep. Boom. Wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna forward it real quick till the end. And then you have your hands up there. Mm -hmm. You knew you won? Um, at that point, I didn't know if I won or not. Uh -huh. But you or I just celebrated just to make the ref see that, yes. you know, I'm still in it. I think I capitalized on this fight. Yeah. Showmanship. Showmanship. And obviously, we say you, you won. That was a close one. It was a close that one. That was close. That was That was close. Even when they call and they called it, but even at the at the end when when we heard the the horn, whatever you call, but uh, Jen and I looked at each other like, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. But I knew something said she won, she won, mm -hmm. she won, she won, and sure enough, you won that one. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my god, she you're two and zero now. Yeah, yeah. That was to a split decision. Really? Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, unanimous. Unanimous. Decision. Unanimous. So, so that, that means, means like the re the judges saw. It. Two rounds in my favor. So you had more points. I don't know if it's a point system or... Yes. Okay, so you had more points than her, and that's why it was the given to you. Yes. Okay. What, what, what's another thing that you can stop? So uh, There's tap out. There's a ta tap out. Yeah. There's TKO. Uh-huh, knockout. Total knockout. Uh, uh, then there's KO. So TKO is like a flurry of punches, and uh -huh. then the ref stops it. Knockout is... You actually get knocked out. And you can't get up. And then you can't get up. So is TKO technical knockout or, or total knock? Or what, what, what would you, uh, judges, judges? Technical knockout. Is it technical knockout? Yes, technical. So TKO is technical knockout, meaning your skills, you just, the guy can't defend himself no more. Yes. And it's like, okay, stop it, stop it. You, you know, you're, you're doing good. And then obviously knockout, it means when I'm on the ground and they, I can't get back up. Yes. Wow. And then there's also uh, judges' decision. Yes. Yes. Split decision, unanimous decision. What would be your favorite? Knockout. Knockout. <laughs> I would want to rather just knock someone out. Really? Yes. Oh, man, you're mean. I think that's everyone. Really? Yeah. Holy crap. So or you, submission. You, you're a twin, right? 
Yes, I'm so a you're, twin. you're the evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. I've seen your sister before. You guys obviously are twins, but uh-huh. uh, yeah, you must be the evil twin. <laughs> wow. Before we finish up, and once again, we had some people write in. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to ask you questions. <laughs> They're like, hey, I'm going to have Kim Peterson, uh, Kim, uh, Kim Peterson, the killer panda on the show. And there, a lot of people were like, I want to write in. I want to ask questions. So it, those questions are coming from other people. So if you don't mind, I, I would love to ask you those questions. And then if you don't mind, we can do a spread round. Let's see see how it goes. Okay. You having fun so far? Yes, I'm having All fun. All right, good, good, good. Once again, guys, I'm learning here. You know, this is why I'm not I'm not able to ask those technical questions because I don't know what I'm seeing. I just see two people fighting and you know, sometimes it's like it's like watching a French movie. You know, you're you're watching the movie and you you see what the uh, the actors are doing, but you don't know what they're saying. And then same thing with me. When I see fight, yeah, I see people hitting each other and doing certain things and I see I hear the I don't know. Was it the judges that that say all the, the do the narration? That's the commentators. The the commentators they're they're saying certain things, and I'm like, wow, I don't speak that language, and that's one of the reasons why I I created this podcast because I want to start learning that language. So the next time I go to a fight and I hear these terminologies or these words, it's like, oh, okay, I know exactly what they're doing, or maybe even I can call it out and say, oh, look, they did a spin move, whatever the case may be. So I think that isn't any sport or any technical thing that you do there's always jargon and terminology and, and regulations and certain terms that you guys use so uh, give me one second what was i going to do oh, i was going to pick up the questions give me one second let me pull up the questions and we go from there uh, guys if you guys don't mind feel free to share guys um like i said this is our first podcast and i don't want to blow up i'm not trying to be a youtube famous here or anything but what i want to do is i want to ex- give me a second See, I'm a one-man show here. I want to expose, you know, fighters out in the industry. You know, uh, I want to do my best to help people. And if I can maybe influence somebody to say, you know what, either go into the gym or whatever the case may be, you know, I, I, I did my job. So give me one second. I know I'm all over the place. I can't do two things at once. Here we go. You ready for some questions? Yes. All right. All right, so these are going to be some funny and some serious questions, so feel free to say pass if you don't want to okay. answer the questions. This is nothing personal, but you see what I'm saying? All right, here we go. This is from Jen. Obviously, you know Jen. She she sent you a question. As a matter of fact, she's in the background somewhere right now. <laughs> if you had to fight a celebrity in oh. the octagon, who would you fight and why? Maybe it can be a celebrity. Oh, I hate this guy. I can't stand Vin Diesel or I hate The Rock. But if you were to fight one celebrity, who would it be? It doesn't matter if it's male or female. Who would you fight? Give me a second to think a little <laughs> bit. A celebrity. I tell you who I would fight. You tell me first. Okay. I would fight The Rock. <laughs> so The Rock, if you were out there, guys, oh, I'll no. see you in the ring. I'm just playing. <laughs> I don't know. It's just for some reason he rubs me the wrong way. You know, obviously he's rich and famous, but I'm not. But it's just one of those things you're like, I don't like that person. I just don't like the way they are. So just to start it off, I I would say The Rock. I would fight The Rock. Obviously, I'd get my ass kicked. But if she trains me, you you, you know, I got a fighting chance there. (laughs) Who, who, Who would you? Who would it be? It could be somebody you like, too. Doesn't matter. A celebrity that I would like to fight yeah. in the ring. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, right? Get rid of that. Oh, man. It's a hard for one, right? For some reason, I don't know why, yeah. Judge Judy just comes into my head. Holy crap. Not because I want to fight her, but because I'm a fan of her. Yeah, absolutely. And it would just be cool to associate myself with yeah. her. But I wouldn't really want to beat her up. Judge she's Judy, so, she's calling she's you so out sweet. right now. Oh, I know, little Jewish lady. When you said celebrity, I thought of Judge Judy. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it. That's it. Okay. So no against Judge Judy, but yes. Nothing she against would, you, Judge she, Judy. She, she, she would fight you, Judge <laughs> Judy. Absolutely. Now, do you think, and then once again, I'm just paraphrasing some of the questions that are out here. Do you think more women should go into MMA I think MM, women's MMA yeah. is still growing. Is and it? I think that there is an opportunity for yeah. women who who li- who would like yeah. to get into it, uh-huh. uh, can train and train hard, yeah. and they have a chance yeah. to do it. But And it's not just about 
training to fight. It's training to understand how to fight and defend yourself. And you see what I'm saying? Yes. There's a lot of bad people out there. So, you know, I, I want like, for example, my wife, I want her to defend herself if I'm mm-hmm. not there. You see what I'm saying? I want her to be like, oh, baby, I got to go to this meeting and I'll be home late. I know if something happens and I know the training that they can have MMA, jujitsu, boxing will help them. So do you think more women should be in it? Um, if they want to fight, yeah, they should fight. Uh-huh. There's opportunities for them to fight. Yeah. Do I think all women should learn self-defense? I 100% yeah, believe that women should yeah. learn to, to learn uh-huh. to defend themselves. Yeah. Because a lot of people think that... Um, martial arts is just fighting yes but it's really not like when i got into martial arts yeah. i got into it because i'm a fitness person yeah i like fitness i like working out mm-hmm. it was a fun way to uh-huh. work out yeah and then there's always growth within martial arts and Absolutely. i think there's a lot of benefits uh physically yeah mentally <clears throat> um you're challenging yourself yeah. and i just encourage all women yeah to find their local martial arts school yeah I know that in certain communities, there's more than just one. So yeah. find one that fits you best mm-hmm. and stick with it. Yeah. Here's another question. Okay. I'm just reading it. I'm not getting come up with the question. I'm just reading it. What's up with women braiding their hair? It looks painful. Have you tried it? <laughs> um, you know, the cornrow. I don't know what they're right. called, but the, I don't know. I have not braided my hair. Yeah. Um, for a fight. For a fight. Yeah. Uh, my hairdo is is the least on my list to worry about, uh-huh. but kudos to those that can get their yeah. hair braided because I know it takes a long time. Yeah, I know, and it looks like it hurts. I know, especially imagine getting hit in that tight ass hair, <laughs> and then you take your braid off and my hair comes yeah. off. So, <laughs> am I right or wrong? Right. Yeah, it's like a weave or something, right? There was actually a moment in uh-huh. my last fight where. Her hair was actually in my face, uh-huh. and I remember like smelling it. it, is, yeah, it is. And, I, and for a split second, I did was just like inner dialogue was like, "Ugh, I want her hair out of my face." Did right it now. smell like burnt something? It, or it smelled weird. It just it didn't weird. smell like hair. Oh wow! But I don't worry about my hair. Uh-huh. I, I'm just like get it out of my eyes and put a bun, and I'm good to go. Wow, got you. All right, here here's another one. Okay. What is one of the things that you do to get ready before a fight? It could be either I watch cartoons, I eat this or whatever. What's one of your rituals? I know you've had two fights, but mm-hmm. from here on down, if you continue on fighting, what would be your ritual? What's the what's the thing? I the ritual that I notice for both of my fights is I I stay off social media. Okay, good. I detox myself from social media. Okay, good. Um, I. Try not to look at it. Um, I've been reading more mental preparation books. Uh-huh. Um, so that helps a lot. And a silly one is that I watch more like serial killer documentaries on like yeah. YouTube. Uh-huh. <laughs> or I'll watch like my last. Actually, both of my fight camps, I watched Forrest Gump. Uh huh. I don't know. That movie gets me. I love that movie. Really? Forrest Gump. Oh, good. But for the most part, I just try to focus on the task at hand, trying to balance everything else in my life, but also preparing for war. Yeah. Theme song. Theme song. They're, they're, what is it called? An entrance song or a ring song? Or the walkout one, song? The walkout song. Thank you. Say once again, I don't I don't know these terms. The walkout sound. What, what's your walkout song? My last walkout song was... A war, a war song. I actually forgot about what Holy the crap. name was. I like, for me, I like upbeat music, like war music. Okay. So something that feels like you're about to go to war. Oh, wow. Because that's how I see it. Yeah. I feel and see that I'm going to war. Mm-hmm. So I like mm-hmm. war beats. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my last one was called uh, Sick Puppies. Sick Someone's Puppies. Someone's going down. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. So... I like the lyrics yeah. kind of match the energy that I'm go- going into. Wow. Every person, like there's some fighters that yeah. have the same walkout song every fight. And yeah. then there's fighters that have different walkout songs every yeah. fight. So I guess it just depends on how you see yourself going into yeah. that fight. 
I, I already have my walk outside. So if I ever decide to fight, I already have my song because that's the song that I use the train with. What's the song? It's called One De Banton. One De Banton? I'll, I'll send you the link so you can hear it. <laughs> it's not a, rah, rah, you know, kill song. It's it's a relax. Because uh-huh. I think if I, if I ever, 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 ever were to fight... I would want to be relaxed. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? You know me. I, I'm, I'm in the, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in combat. And you think we'd listen to like Metallica. You think we listen to something like Slipknot. No, we listen to reggae music. We listen mm. to that. Like when I train or when I work out, it's always reggae music mm-hmm. because there's a, a, a tempo. Mm-hmm. Like a cadence. A cadence, exactly. And that's and that's what if you ever see me, you can even count my <laughs> Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. So and even when I cycle, even when I was in combat, it was always reggae music or something soft. But the, the song from one the Banton is actually a reggae uh-huh. song. So yeah. I'll send you this. That'll be my walkout song. <laughs> cool. Here, here, here here's once again, here's one from Jennifer again. If you were to fight with a fruit. A fruit? It said, if you had to use a, a, oh. a fruit as a weapon, <laughs> not fight with the fruit. If you had to fight, a, 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 was it if you were to fight, if you were to be in a, in the cage with one fruit uh-huh. with your opponent, what fruit would it be? I know it's a dumb question, but it's just, it's on there. Hmm. What is a durable fruit? Which one's a durable I say fruit? pineapple. Oh, that's a good one because the spikes. <laughs> yeah. I get that one. Yeah. Um, it'd probably be a grapefruit. A grapefruit. Because a grapefruit kind of feels like a softball to me. And then if you like hit someone with it, yeah, it might really hurt. Got you. So grapefruit. Good questions, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Good questions. I know, right? It's, it's a, little, a little other ones here. Give me a second. Um, Killer Panda. Where, where, where did that come from? <laughs> It, and once again, I, when you when I heard your name for the first time, the first thing that came up was Kung Fu Panda, uh-huh. the cartoon. Yeah. But what, how did that? Is that your alter ego or? or? The killer panda is definitely an alter ego. Uh-huh. Well, the killer part. Yes. Because for the most part, I'm just a panda. Yeah. Like I'm easygoing. Um, I like to eat. Uh, the pandas are also ferocious, too. Yeah. Well, that's they why. They have to. Yeah, they, they have ferocious, to. So that's where the killer part comes. Yeah. I don't know how I adopted the name Panda. Yeah. Is Name, that something they called you or? Names just come to you. So okay. like when you're training, mm-hmm. like your coach will just call you a nickname and yeah. then that sticks with you. Hey, dumbass, pay attention. <laughs> All right, the dumbass. <laughs> right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. But the killer Panda came yeah. to me. You know what's funny is um, we walk our dogs and everything and Everybody, they always see the way I dress. Mm-hmm. And it goes, you should be a tailor. Mm-hmm. And that's, I was like, you know what? I like that name. Yep. So if I ever, 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 ever <laughs> were to fight, my name would be Ruben the Taylor. And then my last name. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Um, let me see. Let me, let me skip one more question. All right, guys. So what I want to do now, guys, is I want to ask her some rapid questions. I want to ask her some questions that she's not going to have time to think. She just has to spit from the lip. All right. So let's do it. You ready for some uh, rapid questions? Yes. Cool. Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. Uh, Gluten free or gluten? Gluten. Oh, yes, yes, (laughs) yes, yes. Uh, Pizza or hamburgers? Ooh, hamburgers. Hamburgers. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. What's another one? Which celebrity, dead or alive... Would you have dinner with Paul Rudd? Paul, really? Yes. The comedian, the actor. Yes. Oh, uh-huh. cool! That's awesome. I would have never thought that about would that. Would be from a fun, me. funny dinner. Really? Okay. What is the funniest word in the English language? For me, it's coupon. <laughs> I was like, coupon. Well, who came up with that word, coupon? But mm-hmm. what's what's the what's a word that you think it's funny? Moist. Moist. <laughs> Moist. Moist. <laughs> And what's your favorite emoji? Um, there's <laughs> this emoji that uh, my sister's like. It's the one that goes like, <laughs> like it's a, like a cringy face. Yeah. The cringy face one. Yeah. The cringy face. Oh, the one that looks like this. No, it's like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't sure. Even reenact well, it I'll try to face. find it and I'll try to put it on here, guys. <laughs> Kim, thank you so much. We had fun. Thank you so much, guys, for you guys that are watching. Thank you so much for the Killer Panda. Thank you for uh, having me. Absolutely. Um, really quick, uh, here, this is going to be a ritual, but what I want everybody to do anytime I have a guest, as you see, look at this nice, clean table. So if you don't mind, I would like you to bless this table awesome. with your name. And uh, 
put whatever you want on there. You can just put your name, the date, whatever. So every time we have somebody here, they're going to sign the table. So whoever wants to come on the podcast, um, yeah. So once again, guys, we have Kim, the killer panda, Peterson. She's uh, from Valiant Training Center in Santee, California, guys. Uh, she's my personal trainer. We box. She did my physical fitness with my, uh, with my wife and I. And now I've, I, I think I've graduated He's graduated. I've graduated because now I'm in the group classes, yes. right? Yes. Uh-huh. Now, before I get you guys, uh, let you guys go, I have one more thing for you. So, <laughs> this this is my favorite candle. This is from a company called Le Labo. So, if you guys want to look it up, it is Umbroxide 17. I don't know if you like the smell of it. Uh-huh. Did you smell it? Yeah, if you don't like the smell of it. There's a candle here, too. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. setting the mood. This is my favorite fa- uh, my favorite candle. This is my favorite candle in the world. I have a lot of these, and every time I smoke a cigar, I always make sure there's a candle because my wife doesn't like the smell. <laughs> so what I did is I actually got you the same candle. Thank you. Check it out. Le Labo, if you guys want to sponsor the show, by all means, go for it. And uh, if you don't mind, go ahead and pull out the box. And the great thing about these candles is that they're actually personalized. Oh. So you can actually personalize. You don't have to open the box, but if you look at the box, just to show you, it says Killer Panda right there. Oh, awesome. So once you get it, you'll see that it'll say Killer Panda right there. So, guys. Thank you, Ruben. So, yeah, absolutely. Ruben so, the Taylor, everybody. Ruben the Taylor! <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the first uh, podcast. I know we're all over the place, but once again, we're still learning here. So, guys, so once again, guys, this is Ruben the Taylor. Thank you, go so much, Kim. The Killer Panda. Killer Panda. Shout out to the Valiant uh, participants. Oh, what would you call them? Students. Yep. Trainers. Valiant trainees. crew. I'm calling you guys out. If you guys want to be on the podcast, come see me. Get with Kim, and we'll see you guys here. Guys, thank you so much. Intro out. Peace.